those like emojis like, okay. like colorful. <laughs> oh no, I got sorry, I have like flux. Hold on. For an hour. Yeah, okay, so um, I'm gonna continue talking about CSS read, but I'm also gonna talk a bit about writing mode. So uh, if you guys came for the November edition last year, uh, you you remember that I kind of I talked about like. Chinese typography on the web, and that's why I like totally talk a lot about writing mode. So um, I will explain what 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 writing mode is later. So first of all, is what is CSS read? So this is from the spec. So blah 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 blah. But the the most important part is this second line, which, as Chris mentioned just now, right? Why do we still need read even though we have Flexbox? Now Flexbox is single axis, meaning it's great for things that are like on one row or it's like on one column. But the moment you try to make a like full-fledged layout with Flexbox, you, it, things start to get a bit tricky. Like you have to give extra wrappers, like things don't behave properly. That's, that's normal because Flexbox wasn't meant to be a full page layout tool. That was what grid was for. So if anybody asks, if you want to think about it, just think, Flexbox is single dimension, while Grid is two dimensional. So that's like the easiest thing to wrap your head around. So, like, what people ask, like, when is CSS Grid supported? Okay, Gecko intends to ship in 52, which is March 7. So like, um, Gecko is like the Firefox guys, and uh, Blink is the Chrome guys. They, they kind of have like standard releases, so they actually can give us a real hard date, which is great. So, Firefox comes first. Blink comes next, one week later, in Chrome 57. So this morning, this was just announced, like, we'll ship in Safari 10.1, which is, because Safari doesn't have a hard date. So Safari is kind of tied to the OS, but we're estimating around, like, March, April-ish. And then we have H, which is, it's on the backlog with high priority. Technically, I, I don't know what this means. So, all of us will look like this. Ta-da! Yeah, yeah. Person um, <laughs> But, okay, so, but, um, where's my Twitter? Okay. So there's this, uh, up, down, there. Is it on the left or on the right? Oh, okay. So this guy, he's called uh, Manuel Vigo. He works for a company called Igalia, and they are, they, are the, they are the guys who are actually working on implementing Grid. So he's part of the web kit. Like, he's part of this announcement on the line. So he obviously says here, like, He's calling out MSH there. So basically, actually, these guys, they all know each other, and they, they, they for, how, how, for all the flag that Microsoft gets uh, for, for, for all this, I think they're doing quite a good job with H and with Windows 10 these days. Like, I, I think I'm the only person in Singapore who uses a Windows phone. But um, one thing that I find uh, very beneficial when I'm doing cross-browser testing is that as you can see, I work on a Mac, right? But if I need to test for MSH, MSH, I believe, uses the exact same engine on the desktop version as the mobile version, which is not the case for uh, iOS, because if a bug on iOS uh, Chrome does not appear on the desktop, they're different rendering engines. The good thing that Microsoft has going for it is that they're going with this whole universal uh, uh, so software thing. So a lot of their mobile and desktop applications are actually running on the same code, which helps. Yes. Possibly. Yes. tricky thing when you're do supporting mobile and that's th to me that's a plus point for Microsoft so yes I'm probably the only pro proponent of Microsoft but <laughs> I have a Windows phone guys Windows phone <laughs> so um Chris mentioned this in words and I'm gonna mention this in a table because tables are cool um, so each of the browsers how CSS Grid has been developed is very different. It's a new way of, a new way of uh, implementing new CSS properties because 
uh, the people who who which is the CSS working group right they, they also do learn from like we learn from our mistakes they also learn from from how it goes along um, when Flexbox was implemented it was really really messy I think when they put new stuff in browsers, there was this assumption that by putting it behind a vendor prefix, it's an indication to developers that this is like experimental stuff, like, and like, please don't put it in production, but obviously nobody listens, like, hey, oh, I can use it now, why not? So, the, what happens is that now we have a lot of vendor prefix code like floating around in the wild, and they couldn't do anything about it. And that's why there are three versions of Flexbox syntax. And, and to them, they felt that there wasn't a good way to roll out a new uh, CSS property. But at the same time, they still needed developer feedback because what they, what, what they, why they wanted to do this is that, okay, I, I'm, we're going like, to roll out this experimental feature. Developers, you try it out and tell us, like, uh, this doesn't work well, or I have this other use case, and that's the point. So how do you prevent developers from, like, pushing experimental code out into the wild but still get their feedback so they tried this developing behind the flag so i think this was a great idea i i personally feel that the 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 way they did it this is great this is why in march when it drops it's going to be poof, immediately standardized unprefixed support almost across the board so perhaps this will be the the way that that they, they continue to implement new new features which is behind the flag so how you enable each browser has its own way of enabling uh, grid. So I built something the other day. Um, I'm from Penang, so I speak Penang Hokkien. And um, basically this is just an excuse for me to play with CSS writing mode. Uh, so if you can see from the screenshot very vaguely, like the Chinese text that I'm using is like vertical, like old school vertical. And um, it's not with any like rotation or right. It's there's there's a CSS property known as writing mode that allows you to uh, tell the browser that I want my text to I want my text to be rendered vertically from right to left. Because at the end of the day, right, the the web is okay. Supposedly, it's supposed to connect the world together. And 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 there are like six thousand languages in the world. And not all of them are Latin based. That are written from left to right, top to bottom. So. Uh, like okay, Chinese traditionally, the tr the old school Chinese and Japanese is okay, right to left, vertical. Mongolian text is uh, vertical but left to right, and all your Hebrew Arabic scripts is actually bidirectional. Uh, if 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 you're mixed, if it's mixed with Latin words, right, your Arabic text is right to left, but your Latin text is still left to right. So when 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 I when I thought about it and. Uh, Unicode is Unicode has to actually implement this logic. Like your computer needs to know that okay, this text is rendered left to right, but this is right to left. It's actually very complicated and it's very interesting. Uh, I will let you all know when I actually fully wrap my head around it. But for now, uh, I, I Chinese right, so naturally I'm going to default to the like what I know best, which is like vertical right to left. So this is what CSS writing mode is. Um, I, I love this gift, but this is just uh, This is the official spec, which is kind of wordy, but generally you can do this. You can make your browser turn on its side. So this is left to right. You can right to left. You can just orientate it vertically. So that's, that's what uh, you can do with CSS writing mode. But the thing about CSS writing, you, after you tell the browser that you want, instead of rendering this way, you want to render this way, right? Uh, Different but the same, it means that centering things is still not, not fun, even though like the same issues uh, still exist. So let's have... So if you get... Oh, it's kind of... But basically that's a box that is... The whole, this, this whole thing is like vertical, um, right to left. So then, that's why my, the top of my box now is the top right hand corner. So, so imagine like the whole, whole brother just went this way. So this is the basic basic code, right? So it's, it's very simple, it's just like standard. So if I want to center this, and um, I'm not using the, the this, this is a, the same method that you use on a on a horizontal horizontal top to bottom style, which is the you use a transform trick. So basically what you do is okay, 
Okay, so basically the what you do is you 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 put the these these last three lines are supposed to a position relative will allow you to use the right property. So you want to kick it to the right 50% and then you translate it back 50%. I tested the oh wait, it's because I stuck. Sorry. This is what So what, what happens is that when you put position relative, you can use the right property. So you kick it 50%, but if you kick it 50%, it's not enough. So you need to translate it over another 50%, then it's like right smack the center. So this is the, this is the same method that you use for horizontal stuff. But the, the, the difference is that now, when you do my, when we want to center things like uh, along the horizontal axis, you do a uh, margin left auto, margin right auto, right? So when you flip everything on its side, right, you use margin top and bottom. So it, the, your, your browser literally, it's kind of the same, it just renders you, using a different directional syntax. So the up, down, left, your top and bottom become your so-called left, right equivalent. That's what happens when you flip stuff. And um, so let's, let's say we don't want to do this and we want to use flexbox. It's slightly easier with flexbox, as you all know when you all did when you all do normal horizontal centering with flexbox, it's, it's much better also. Oh yeah, this is not so not working. Yeah, right. Okay, this doesn't so so this doesn't work well because writing mode and flexbox doesn't play very well together. Um, and on Firefox, right, what happens is Firefox has like three bugs here. If you are interested, you can go and look at it. I will share this later. But basically, I think because writing mode is not that uh, well, like not a lot of people use it. So I suppose the browsers, browser vendors have like better bugs to work on. So if you want to use writing mode, there is quite a number of buggy things when it comes to layout. So when I was building my this site, right? Um, on Firefox, so this, this title would get kicked off the page, and I, I, and that's that. It took me like one day to realize it was actually a browser bug. But the the, the the case in point that I want to make is that flexbox and writing mode don't play very well yet at the moment. So that's out. So actually the oh here's the bug. I yeah, but it doesn't even work. Uh, it, it doesn't even work if you use it on, on, on Firefox because the bug isn't fixed yet. Oh. But just take my word for it when I say that it's bug. Um, so today we learned that to center along the vertical axis, you use top and bottom, which corresponds to on the horizontal axis left, right? Sideways equivalent left, right? So, Browsers are very inconsistent with writing mode right now. So the best way to actually, that I got around this was, I had to write a lot of fallback code. But then I realized that, uh, so I have, a, I have like some, on, some friend who is really good with grid. She was like, actually all this will be, all your problems will go away when grid drops in March. So I was like, okay, let's try doing this in grid. Uh, for FYI, writing mode is pretty well supported but buggy. So take this graph with a pinch of salt. But there's this CSS property that I discovered while I was like trying to debug everything. It's, it's not implemented much yet, but the spec already exists. It's called logical properties. Because somebody in the W3C or CSS working group realized that, hey, left, right, doesn't really apply if you use a different writing mode. Like, if you, if you use, if, if any of you wondered why the flexbox syntax uses justify content and align content, right? And they use start and end instead of left and right. And you're like, oh, why is it so confusing? Just use left and right. Uh, it's precisely for this reason, because left and right, when your writing mode is different, 
doesn't make sense anymore. So that's why from Flexbox on from, from Flexbox onwards they start they thought like okay start and end probably makes more sense because in that case your writing direction could be all over the place and start and end still applies as opposed to left and right which are like very fixed directions. So like start and end versus left and right. The thing is cannot use. If you're reading this from the future, maybe you can buy it's like quite no not not really. And the spec is still in the draft status. But I think this will be coming soon because if you if you think about it right, uh grid and flexbox have already started using start and end this out syntax. So uh, potentially this will go to float. When it when it comes out right, float instead of left and right, I think you can start using start and end also eventually. So that that's that's something that I'm looking forward to. But we have CSS grid. And I want to make this very clear, you cannot learn CSS grid overnight. The spec is long and it is actually a very powerful CSS property. There are a lot of properties like associated with grid. And it the ones that Chris and I are introducing to you all are the most basic ones. Like you probably can get those in like today, but there's a lot more to it. There's like the auto placement algorithm, there's like a lot of different as different things you can do with grid that you you really cannot possibly learn it in one day is the type of thing that like oh I think I better learn this for real sit down like one week actually build something and like actually play with it before you actually really get it so okay this Chinese phrase here you can read it if you can read the Han Yu Ping is directly translates to like Peach blossoms need to go through a very harsh winter before they can blossom. Yeah. Okay, I have to put this in there because this this text here, right? Uh, in this whole thing is in the HTML movie element, which I actually wrote about last year. What it does is really special. As you can see, I'm a big proponent of all these internet internationalization stuff. But um, so if you are Chinese you might find this familiar, like in primary school, the, 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 the books that I read, right, they, because they want to teach the kids how to read, so they'll have these like Han Yu on top of it. And um, I think before the HTML Ruby element was a thing, I think people, the people who wanted to do this like online, they would actually have to hack it, like they would like, span, use a span and then like make the font size really small. So, but the, the HTML Ruby allows, it, it's really, made specially for this use case, this particular use case. Um, so that's that. Uh, but for, for CSS grid, right, you, ideally you can read the spec because the spec is actually not very technical. It's written in English and the use cases have like real examples like got diagrams and like code. So, so, so it's not like a standard technical manual where you look at it and then you're like, I think this would work better as a monitor stand. You, you actually can, can understand the language inside the spec. So I wish recommend people read the spec. So these are the, these are the um, I would say, easiest properties that CSS Grid has and that, that I use when I try to. So what I did is, this is the actual page that is using a mixture of hacks and floats and, and flex boxes and whatever. And I replicated it. Did it if it looked exactly the same to you, that is the point. Basically, it's just rewritten in, in grid, but um, the code is uh, smaller. So 17 KB become 14 KB, so it's like less code in there. Um, so the first thing is, is like, because this is just like a hodgepodge of like wrappers and like lots of wrappers just packed everything together. But if I wanted to put it in grid, you have to like imagine how the grid looks like. So this is how I put it down. Like, so there are three sections. I, it doesn't make sense for everything to be a single grid because the, the there's no there's no grid like the three sections right are, are not related to each other but within themselves so actually I have three separate grids for this particular layout right so the first part is, is very simple so I'm just gonna explain very quickly the syntax what CSS grid has is there's this concept of grid lines so one two three there are grid lines and there's also a concept of tracks which is actually the space between the lines. So like, imagine this is a track, this is a track, track, track. And um, when you see, when I do display grid, right, it's, it's very similar to Flexbox in that you apply some, some properties go on the parent and some go on the container. So in, for container, you just say, oh, okay, um, display grid, 
the column gaps, which what like as Chris mentioned, that like, gaps are a great thing. Uh, they go on the parent. So you specify how big you want the gaps between your columns and rows. You put it on the parent. And for the for the for positioning the kids, right? You use the so big row one two. What it just means is that I want my top left child item to span from one to two. And the grid column is one to two. That's what the numbers mean. It does not mean half. Um, I'm, I'm sure there's a pretty good reason why the syntax is like that. But I think once you wrap your head around it, it's actually quite logical. Um, my favorite uh, properties actually similar to flex forms is this align self and justify self. Oh, this makes my life so much easier. So all I it's exactly the same as flex forms. Uh, for align self and justify self, right? It's basically like inside this thing, you can just align it in the center. Uh, self is for a single child. If you apply align content, justify content on the parent, then it's like everybody. But you can customize the positioning within each grid cell by using the align self. So the syntax, the values are similar to flex spots, like start and end, center and stuff like that. Oh my god, I love favorite flash ever. <laughs> so this is pretty simple. This is also very simple. It's just here, this is something that I want to, he mentioned just now, right, FR, which represents a fraction of the free space in the grid container. So this again is very similar to flexbox in like um, flex basis property. So I, on the container, you have grid template columns. There's also a corresponding grid template rows. What this does is that you apply this, you define your track sizes on your parent. That's why it uses, it's like it's a template. So your kid track, your kid just, you just tell your kids where to go. But the size of the track itself is defined on the parent. So that's why it's grid template column. So for column track, I wanted this one to be 3.6M, so it's fixed. But the rest are like do whatever. So you use one FR. So again, it's a fraction of the free space. So it's not that it's a fraction of the whole thing. It's whatever free space that's left over after the fixed items are accounted for. Um, the spec covers this. And, and I'm just going to prove that it's in English, OK, you guys. Uh, it says here, see, it's, it's very understandable, right? Like, uh, distribution of free space occurs after all non-flexible track sizing functions have reached their minimum. That's pretty Englishy, right? It's understandable, right? It's a nice document. Like if you're waiting for your flight, you can just read this at the airport. It's good for you guys. Good for you. And um, okay, moderate grid. Yeah. So you can nest grids. Um, so what I did is that this nine section thing. The outer grid is just this thin sliver and this. This part. So that's our other grid. So I nested one more grid inside this big space. And I want this is equal, it's just equal uh, four column two row. So what you can do is there's a there's a syntax called repeat. So for template columns, right, you you can even name as you can explicitly uh, rather than using one, two, three, four, right? You actually can name it, but that syntax is a bit more complicated. So let's just go with the index numbers. Huh? But like if it's a pattern, meaning um because I I mean this response is right. So if it's four right, hey, Jake, like, you're yeah? making my code look bad because you're using repeat. Which is <laughs> so I don't want to type like one fr one fr one fr right. You can just use repeat. So I I, I think the the way the the spec writers thought of it, they were like, okay, this is a grid, and some people might want to like have a grid with lots of columns and stuff, and there'll be uh, if there's a pattern there. Like they don't want to type the the widths for sixteen different columns, so let's just give them a repeat function, which they kindly did. So you can do all, you can do this, which kind of makes life easy if you have repeatable patterns in your code. So and 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 actually, that's I only touch on this as I mentioned. There are a lot more in the fact that you, there are, there's something called grid template areas and. You can name the areas which I did not cover. It's just to let you all know that there's a lot more to grid than any person can cover in like one session. It's probably going to be like, oh, let's have a three-day workshop on CSS grid kind of thing. And even then, 
I, I, I won't say it's easy to understand. It's not. Because, but anything that is anything that is very powerful and complex definitely takes a bit more effort on our part to go and understand. If, if it's easy as, oh, CSS, uh, color equal green, right? No, 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 nobody, nobody talks about the CSS background color property, right? Because like, it changes the background color. Thank you. No, 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 no right? So, so that's that. Uh, so this is a very solid further reading if you really want to pick up a bit. Uh, grid by example is like the the, the resource for, for grid by Rachel Andrew. So she came last year or so and she um, did not really talk about grid. She did talk about grid uh, in the in the CSS comp. Uh, but this is like the best resource you can possibly have because she has a lot of live use cases um, which you can actually play around with because you put it on code pen. But she has like simple examples then like actual UI and up all the way up to actual page layouts. So it's and you can just fork her code pen to play with yourself. So that's definitely very good. Uh, as I mentioned, the, the guy whose Twitter I showed just now works for Igalia, right? So they also have a bunch of CSS grid layout examples. Actually the method to enable CSS grid I actually like borrowed from there. And um, CSS tricks has this really great complete guide to flexbox that I like still refer to. And there's an equivalent for grid. And this helps because I can I lose track of the syntax. I hear is it justify content or justify items or something? I will always refer back, and this is a this is a pretty good uh, equivalent for for grid as well. So yes, that is me. We are done. Uh, thanks. Any questions? Probably not. So okay, very good. Cut. <laughs>